This week on RSBNB Update, Easter 2024 arrives with the Blooming Burrow. We discuss a wonderful holiday quests, rewards, egg hunts, skilling, and RuneScape's continued evolution of holiday events. We also discuss the true value of cosmetic overrides. This is RSBNB Update, episode 978, recorded Thursday, March 21st, 2024. Expectations met. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSBNB Update. Spraying in Easter has come to RuneScape, and Tanis, you're here to discuss this uh, with us as you are each and every week. Welcome. Thank you, Shane. Also joining us to discuss Easter and a bit of PVM is Pernasius. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Of course, uh, the reason you're here is because we wanted to do a bit of a PVM update in terms of what you've been up to since the last monthly bit, and uh, show the folks at Patreon and the wider um, RSBNB and RuneScape community how how things have been going uh, on the learning PVM front, because, you know, no better time to learn with necromancy out there as well as the changes that were made uh, to combat last month. So uh, that's why that's why you're here uh, this week. But I'm going to uh, issue a big, big thank you right now to our experienced tier Patreon members who allow us to do what we do here each and every week and without them the podcast would probably uh be impossible so i'd like to thank amos reed andrew c drama free jason s jesse w keski ricky a ripeth runestar and the naked captain big huge thank you goes out to each and every one of them and you'll hear more about our patreon offerings a little bit later in the podcast but if you want to um, follow along, full show notes can be found at update.show. We also have a Discord at update.show slash Discord, and the friends chat is in-game at BitsBytes. And you can find me there at Shane1288. Tannis is at Tannis79, and it seems, seems, seems like Tannis, we always got people on the show who, who, who don't have numbers in their name, like Parnassius. <laughs> well, I bet it's 50-50 if you averaged it out. Yeah, like, maybe, maybe it, is, know, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Good old is. RNG. Fifty <laughs> fifty. Yeah. Okay. Blooming Borough, uh, the Easter event, the new seasonal spring Easter hub is here in game now until March 18th, uh, copying and taking a lot of cues from uh, what we had with Christmas, basically take that entire idea of a seasonal hub area, add some skilling activities, add a seasonal quest around it and add some cosmetic rewards and lo and behold there we have the community easter event um first impressions anyone i like it yeah okay um it, it's it's i mean i had for the christmas one i had everything unlocked other than new stuff so i really only yeah. needed to spend uh an hour or so there to, yeah. to sort of unlock the new stuff i did have some stuff i hadn't unlocked from previous events here so it is taking longer and i was sort of thinking on oh no, i said pre-show that it seemed about the same but it does take a little bit longer i would say to to get the tokens but it makes it more engaging and you know when you've got sort of this two week long event you don't want everyone knocking it all out in in a day and then never going there again so i think balance wise i think they've sort of probably got it right doing okay. it this way it, mm. yeah and and I, and I do want to go into that in some of the activities because you know one of them in particular didn't really seem that uh intuitive off the top for me um tennis where do you land uh on this um so I've had limited time with, with this event so far, but with the time that I have had and what I have been able to to see, um, I like it. I mean, it looks nice, right? Like, it looks nice. Yeah, that, like that was the first here. thing that I said, too, is holy crap, this environment. Yeah, and you could see how, you know, they, they added on from... Um, christmas it it's pretty strung out and it was very difficult for me to follow along and find things so and, and i think I, I can see why i think i can yeah. see why yeah so yeah. once i figured out how to hunt i'm like yep 
let's uh we're we're gonna we're gonna rock with yeah. this for a while yeah uh, but that's my initial kind of impression yeah um i want to start with the environment because you know the environment team always is hitting it out of the park both with how these things are supposed to look in terms of you know the art design style and the direction rs3 is going with this as well as just the implementation of this mm. and you know i wish i wish most of the game world was this bright and and cheery yep. because that like that's the thing i like the most about it is that it's bright and it pops and you know you walk from varrock to falador you don't see that and you know granted we have you know new ground textures and new lighting and whatnot that they've been working on but it doesn't pop nearly as much as this does yeah. and this you know granted said, seasonal hub seasonal hub and i really want to see what the next area that would come to the main game would look like under you know mm. this, this group because obviously you know we had the fort which is an extension of the wilderness so kind of dark and gloomy right and then you know, as you go back to that, you have things like Aya and Sentistin, which are um, have to be themed. But what would something like this, you know, on the world look like if it was, you know, a new area? And the environment team just hit it out of the park with this in terms of, you know, just getting the Easter and spring feeling right, the lighting, and even the color palette on here. It has a very... Beautiful unique direction to it and i just want to spend time here for the sake of you know taking the environment and if i'm being honest with this you know exactly. I, I i don't really care about the well well i do <laughs> care about like i do care about the tokens and such but i would be happy to you know just spend time here and just you know play this mm. as content so i mean it wasn't only hit out of the park it was it, it across the car park as well uh, it is beautiful, and I just love the little rabbit holes and you know little details like you know they've got windows on the roof and you know under the trees and things like that. I mean, it is a great area to hang around in, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And if they could get this kind of detail and color to you know the entirety of the game, I mean that'd be fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, even even you know the waterworks and whatnot in terms of mm. what they did with that. Um, really, really impressed with all that. So, yep. Um, well, we hadn't had a chance to see this kind of stuff. If you, if you think about it, a lot of a lot of what we've had environmental wise has been darker. Yeah, things, like the four, the, the second, the with, succession stuff. Um, like you mentioned, or, um, yeah, yeah, and this is just. It's so lively. I, I would. It makes me want to see what would, what would a 2024 Grove look like, or you know, some something out of that. Some some kind of like a even like even like a, like a new like a new area. Who knows? Or even just yeah. you know a new area expansion because I even think this is right. a level above what we got with Anachronia. The Western Lands. Y yeah, I do too. Yeah, oh, I you mean too. you mean Zaya? And, yeah, um, bring it in. And Corrin, bring it right? In. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bring it in. It's time. <laughs> yeah. So just 100% on that. But let's move on to the quest right now because we also got the seasonal quest with this. And, you know, it's – I don't want to say cookie cutter, but it's kind of the same vein as what we had for Christmas, which I think is fine in terms of this. The quest is, of course, called Great Expectations and the idea – Behind this is that you're heading off and you're uh, going to come up with three different chocolate recipes to uh, bring to this Easter that are different. And, of course, that's the uh, Banafee chocolate, the Fruit and Nut chocolate, and Rocky Road chocolate. And then after that, you make the chocolates, and then you have to go do a sampling in Lumbridge. And then based off of that, uh, the Easter Bunny has his say and you bring it back. And that's effectively a uh, quest complete on this. And, you know, this was actually done by the same uh, J-Mod, uh, Mod Luma, who did the uh, Housing of Parliament Owl quest, believe it or not. So she's yeah, been she's that. been busy on these sorts of things uh, recently, questing. Um, favorite chocolate? 
Well, I, I, I've had Rocky Road and Fruit and Nut is my is my favourite in real life, but I want to try that uh, Banoffee one. Banana and toffee. It, I mean, caramel. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be a favourite. Oh, oh, I, want, I want someone to actually make that in real life. Come on, Cadbury. Pull your finger out. <laughs> Tannis? I, I have to agree. I mean... Oh, my God. Yeah, I I'm not a big rocky roll because I'm, I, I'm not I I I hate bananas. I hate bananas. Really, sure. You hate everything I do. good. You hate cheese. You hate bananas. No, like, God, what are we gonna do with this guy? More grow, Shane. <laughs> more more grow. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not oats. my fault. It's not my fault that if I have bananas, you my, eat my... you eat you eat oats by themselves, don't you, plain? <laughs> It says that you can take you can take what you what you will from that silence, <laughs> but um, okay, um, I would I would probably go uh, go for the rocky road because I don't exactly like the idea of fruit and nut either because you know they do say they do say that it was raisins. It is, yeah. So yummy, um, but. Overall, I, I feel like this quest is something that, you know, you can kind of just say is, yeah, this is kind of how Easter would be on RuneScape and always was. And I feel like if you take the environment and you take just what's around the edges of it, in particular, the quest on this, I feel like you have the hallmarks of a successful Easter event in that it does what it needs to do is that it brings that warm, comfortable feeling of runescape community events and the season we're in approaching easter and delivers on that so i feel like the quest does that and you know it's it 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 does it quite quite well on that reward wise you're looking at a 5000 uh cooking xp lamp 2000 spring tokens emotes from the pre- previous easter events if you didn't already have them and access to the factory line activity in the blooming borough, kind of like how you got access to the um wrapping paper thing at the Christmas event, as well as the bunny outfit, which I might add um yep. which is which is also recolorable and is a is a cosmetic override, so you don't actually need to wait for this one like you needed to wait for the uh like for the for the Christmas one so Ooh, I've seen Shane, you can start uh, you can start your furry collection, yep. And everyone's running around in all the different different colours. I've got greens and purples and pinks and a yellow one I saw. So people, you are know, wearing I it. I, I thought that exact same thing that somebody was going to make that comment that you know you can start your furry collection with this year. <laughs> of course, Tannis is going to come up with that. <laughs> yeah, and I, it, I I did study under the tutelage of one uh, Earth. So, you know, and it does also it does it. also kind of look like um it, it almost looks like kind of like a onesie but i guess you can kind of see that that there's a there's a bottom part associated with it i think it, i think at that point where it's at they should have just you know made it made it a full uh bunny onesie then because at the top you have kind of like the um the top Bobby teeth and, and your head comes out where the mouth would be so but minor minor details on that yep so again just a fun little i mean it's more of a sort of a fetch quest type um quest but fun knocked over in you know 10 minutes uh still doesn't beat the slisky easter event but uh still a very which one, one was that again that's the one you hated where they uh, had the the white chocolate <laughs> okay right yeah. They did the and, Oompa Loompa oh, song. Oh, right. Sliskin. Like. <laughs> right. Right. Of course. Slisky's Chocolate Factory. <laughs> that was still my favorite. That, um, that, wow. <sighs> that one was different. That, that, that's, that's probably why I liked it, because it was so different. <laughs> I'm going to say this is probably my favorite Easter then. Given really? everything we've had. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been a very fun one, and the as you said, the seasonal hub is really what what makes this one yeah special. So I I have to say I'm I'm going to be the cringe lord here, and I'm going to pick the cringiest Easter, which has actually when I think about it now, is my favorite Easter, and that's when they abandoned the whole idea of Easter and went to a spring event, a spring festival, and we had. 
the monkey gorilla goddess punch? And, oh. and the cabbage. Oh, that was yeah. And it gave us cabbage face punch, right? Who doesn't uh, who doesn't love that lovely little gym? Yeah, there's a, there's actually, a reason. I actually do enjoy that. <laughs> oh my god, there's actually a reason then um, why if I go into the uh, rewards for this one, that cabbage face punch rewards are ones that I haven't actually grabbed is because I didn't actually like what was <laughs> what was on offer with that. So um, let's let's talk about some of the rewards um, right now on this here because you mentioned them and you know you talk to the gummy bunny. And it's the gummy bunny that has the store is where you spend your spring tokens. And this is where you can go back and you can get all of the um, legacy cosmetics for that there. Um, the only thing I was missing in terms uh, outside of the face bunch stuff was the butterfly necklace as well as all the um, obvious, you know, like the brassican cloaks and whatnot there. So that's where you get the uh, the cosmetic overrides, including the legacy ones, and I and I'd imagine you know as 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 time goes on, they'll add more to it, kind of like they said they're going to do uh, with Christmas here. So we do have a collection of five new ones here, including a title of the flowers, um, the gummy surprise eggs that you can buy, which uh, give you a, a drop on the on the rare loot table. Uh, there's the bunny hungry overhead emote, Leica, the companion, uh, rabbit pet, and the burrow teleport. So those are the things that you can buy with spring tokens. So if you were if you were just wanting to you know look at you know the spring tokens and see what you would have to buy this year if you had everything unlocked, you'd need eight thousand uh, spring tokens only, which you know really isn't that much work considering you know you get two thousand from the quest and then you can just kind of AFK. Um, at the other one, at the other ones for that. So I, I, I don't think that's too extreme, and I think, I think I will go through the through the list here because there's there's some apparently other ones that I missed out on. I don't have the Imperial Coronation helmet or the Imperial uh, Coronation torso override either on this one. Um, I'm also missing the chick axe, believe it or not. How you miss? Well, was, it, yeah, 2019 one. It, yeah, was that from the beta and then something else? I have no idea, but I'm also missing, as like, I said, the Brassican cloak, the Marimbin cloak, and the and the Godless cloak. <laughs> so you can see what oh, I didn't, didn't do yeah, there. You didn't and, do that and, one. And see, that's <laughs> that's specifically why I mentioned. Oh, uh, oh, you're talking about this bunch on that. Yeah, I had the Marimbin cloak, but I didn't have Godless or Brassican. Yeah, let me actually go and see what I am missing. Yeah, so so there's those, but there's also if you go opposite, opposite the gummy bunny, you can talk to the nougat uh, bunny, and this is where you trade in your egg points, and this is where you get things like the titles, um, the egg. You get the Easter trees for the fort. You can get the Gothic sleepy overhead. Uh, emote the ego dizzy overhead emote the flower sprout aura that they show the spring picnic outfit which has been shown on the news posts and whatnot so i honestly feel like when we're talking about rewards for this event you're gonna get more out of the egg points rather than the spring tokens which i think kind of leans into what you were talking about about how it feels as though these are a bit slower and the shop is kind of balanced out in that way. So mm. you really only need to grind the activities inside the community hub if you are getting those 8,000, well, I guess I guess 6,000 if you factor in the quest and then anything you might have missed in previous years. But everything else that you're going to want to get comes from, of course, uh, the egg, the egg tokens. So... That's that. That's I think what what we gotta you know really focus on, um, for this one the golden egg hunts, the community egg hunts, the Gilanor, uh, hunt and the community hunt on that because in addition to the to the rewards that I mentioned there on that, um, there's the floral loot beam and I know Tannis you didn't you said you didn't have that much time with the update this week, so I think 
as hard as it is when it comes to these egg hunts, the floral loop beam is probably something you're going to be interested in because from what I can see, I think this is about, maybe about as close as you're going to get to the accessible loot beam with the exception of the okay. Christmas presents. Ah, uh, you got me then. Well, <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask Tennis how he found finding the eggs. Yeah, because, because that's where we go next is it. the egg hunt inside inside mm. inside the burrow. And, you know, my sense on that is that for me, somebody who wears glasses and, you know, has corrected vision, I found it kind of difficult to see the eggs. I yep. haven't found any eggs. Yeah. And and see and see that's and then see that's the clincher on this is that they're not just on the floor. They can be up in trees. They can be under fences. Which, <laughs> I appreciate the ones in the trees because I used to hide when with my kids we used to do the Easter egg hunts and I used to put a couple up in the tree and my my uh, wife at the time used to always tell me off because she didn't want the kids climbing trees. I said, well, that's all <laughs> part of the fun. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I do appreciate that. I doing it on my laptop, which I play in sort of a, a mi low, not minimum, but the next one up low resolution. Uh, they are hard to see. Uh, I did today's one on the laptop because I did it just before we started the show, uh, which is run it at, at uh, Ultra and a lot easier to see. But again, for anyone who does have trouble with their eyes, that they are they are difficult because they're hidden sort of in in the plants, in the water. Uh, yeah, there's one on the on the spinning wheel. Uh, you know, sort of tucked in corners and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I the, the wiki does have a map up to show the spots of them all. Yeah. So and, if you do and, struggle, have a right. look at that. But yeah. And the way that works is that it's going to be different where they are each and every day, but there is a, a list of all the different places that they can be. So you can in effect just, you know, run through this list and mm. and 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 do that at the end of it and then you'll find your find your 12th egg. But, you know, I don't even know if you want to be doing the one inside the burrow because this is the one, this is the one, isn't it, that awards the uh, hard, hard clue casket or the, the, the holiday reward casket. Yes, holiday reward casket out of this. But yeah. you also get your points. Okay. Okay, so you do get... So you These get, are the ones that give you the egg points. Right. But there's also the Gielinora egg hunt, which, which gives points as well. That's the weekly well. one. That, mm. There's that weekly one, and then there's a community one on top of that, which happens on Sunday and hasn't happened yet as as per time recording on this. Yep. So you can do basically one Blooming Burrow hunt each and every day. You can do one Gielinor egg hunt every week, which comes in on weekly reset, and the Sunday one will be the Gielinor egg hunt. And as for the... Burrow hunt, as we already talked about, there's a a link uh, to the to that in the wiki, which I'll throw into the show notes on that one. And the same thing for the Gielinor egg hunt uh, that has you go around, uh, you know, a whole a whole myriad of places. If I'm being honest here, um, you know, it, it it started it started with the Lady Lumbridge wreck on Crandor, then it went to the Wizard's Tower, then it went to Ice Mountain. Then the exam center, then the party room, and then we're off to Port Serum. Then, oh, well, let's go see what's happening on the Wall of Rock. Then we go to 2023's piece of headline content, the city of Um. Then we go to just outside the World Gate. After that, we take a trip to the Fremenic Province near the Slayer Cave. Then to Menaphos, interestingly enough, there's, a, there's one in there. And then the final one is north of the Necromancer Tower, south of Ardoyan. And that was week one. And then, of course, there's yep. week two, which you can, uh, which you'll see next week on there. So that's the egg hunt that gives things like the, the spring trees at the fort, that gives the walkover ride, that gives the outfit, 
and I think importantly uh, gives the floral loop beam tannis. I posted a, a, a link to that in, yeah. in, in in the chat of the floral loop beam. I don't know if you've been able to. I, um, I, I did. Yeah. yeah. And? I, I'm going to have to probably get it or wait until it comes back <laughs> up. Um, and this is kind of, this is where I'm at with that. I, I wish... Because to me, this is the best reward of of the event, and yeah, I wish there was, I wish this was the quest reward or something, you know, some other way. Um, because this is how I feel like I don't, I don't want to take away from anyone else, right? And so, like. If it's fun for people in the trees, and that makes sense. Like, I, I don't want to take that away. I just wish I had access uh, to be, you know, to be able to get that particular reward. It's a pity it's not an actual token that you can sort of buy and then trade to someone. Yeah, that would be that, you, dude. I'd be because that would totally help out happy with people that. People like yourself, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally happy with that. And people aren't gonna like to hear this. But, you know, given the fact there's a there's a bond offer out there um, that allows you to, in effect, you know, buy skill pet ears for one of your skill pets out there. I mean, we're at the point, why not, you know, just sell for yeah. some, you know, currency. Put it on uh, Solomon's store. Yeah. I mean, you could, honestly, like, if if you swapped around, well, probably... The second, my second favorite reward is those um, skill pet ears, right? Yeah. If you swapped them around, I don't think it'd be any less. I mean, I don't think it'd make yeah, a difference. Yeah, and and, right? and you know, and, to be fair, you can earn the skill pet ears um, from gameplay too. They're just more rare. Right. Um, yes, yeah, the same. You said you, you got one of those already, right? I got one in the first two hours uh, when on release, uh, but I haven't seen one since. And you know, I've been this has pretty much been my AFK in a couple of you know sort of three four hours a day down here. So uh, I don't know if it's just one you can earn or if you can get multiples. But yeah, being a token, I would assume you could have multiples. I think on that bond thing you're talking about, you actually get three overrides with it anyway, so you'd have to be multiples. Yeah. Hmm. Um, a specific skill pet bunny appearance token is uh, it can be found while skilling during a 2024 Easter event or through the marketplace, providing a player has at least three of the overrides still locked. If a token is used on a skilling pet that is not owned, a warning is displayed stating the appearance will not be used until the pet is unlocked. Uh it doesn't say anything if you if you need to use it immediately. But given mm. the fact you can get three of them from the uh bond store, I'm willing to bet that you just went unlucky on that. Yeah, I either got very, very lucky on the first one or been incredibly unlucky to get any extras. <laughs> yeah, fair. And you know, with that I I, I think um, I, I I think it just is worth saying that when you look at all this and you look at the way the egg hunt is set up, is that personally for me, I feel like the the things I want to get are more associated with the with the egg hunts than the than the uh, spring tokens. Do you guys agree? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it's something. It's not just something you ha you can just AFK this one. You have to be involved in in the gameplay, actually participating, running around and hunting. So it sort of makes sense that the better rewards would be in here. But as I said, just for that, uh, just just for for people like Tanis who who do have the trouble. And I mean, I'm not great either. I, I wear glasses and and such and. And I struggled the first couple of days, but now I've uh, done it a bit. You know, I'm, I'm sort of right. But they, they need to make them a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I had to 
I think I got up to like egg eight or nine, and then I was like, okay, I've made a circle of the of the burrow. It's time to it's time to you know look this up, right? And then that's when yeah. I found it. Oh, it can be in the tree. Oh, it can be in the bottom of the of the chicken pen. Oh, it can be you know on a rock that you might not necessarily think is normally accessible. So yeah, um, I think I got to ten or eleven. I think it was one or two I couldn't find. That's when I. Just- Paved in. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and see, that's the thing. You basically just got to look in places that you normally wouldn't think to look or mm. that, you know, might not have been traditionally uh, accessible in 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 RuneScape. And, you know, given the fact they're up in trees, it, you don't normally think to, you know, tilt the camera up and look up into a tree. Exactly. So that would be my number one uh, thing to people who are having issues with that is just, you know, look up into the tree and maybe... Uh, from that, you'd be able to uh, to find the... To find Maybe the, just put in a little egg. thing, you know, like they do with treasure trails where it starts beeping you the sort of hot or not type thing. You can sort of have something you can toggle on or off. So for people who are sort of struggling, they can flick that on and say, oh, yeah, I'm near one. It starts sort of beeping at me, so I know to look carefully around this area. I'm not sure how, you know, but, yeah. They, or better yet, just... I think inc- they need to make it a little more accessible. The, or just increase the click areas so that the mouse over um, yes. highlighting will uh, activate. And the size sooner. of the egg, because they're very small. Yeah. But I, but I, feel, like, I, feel, I feel like that's all that's all minor in the grand scheme. Exactly, yeah. It. Still so, great. Still um, fun. I want to talk about the actual skilling stuff, but before we do that, I'm going to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, this week, I'd like to thank Alvaro L., Amos Reed, Andrew C., Arvidzel, Chubura, Daniel W, Dominic R, Drama Free, Duramax, Free Milk, Gila Fleur, Jacob G, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jeebus, Jesse W, Keski, Lemon Lodge, Ling01, Luminos, Nate the Great, Pernasius, Ren Hawk, Ricky A, Ripeth, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Shirt Pants, Targian, Truth Ray, The Naked Captain, The Dabbing Goat, Tim, Tom V, Ukulele Steve, Zant, and Zazacon. Big, huge thank you to everybody out there for allowing us to do what we do here on the podcast. It truly means the world to us. And if you're wondering what all this is about, you can head on over to patreon.com slash RSBNB and sign up for as little as a dollar a month. And if you do that, you gain access to our bonus shows, which we do one a month right now. And the interesting thing about this is that these shows are chosen by you guys, and they focus on one topic and talk about that single topic for about an hour, maybe a little bit more in the case of the one we most recently did. But the idea behind this one was that we're going to use this one as an audio-based tutorial to help anybody who's interested get into PVM, which, you know, necromancy's out, combat update's out, perfect time to do that. And you are a guinea pig, uh, Parnassius. We'll hear more about what you have been doing with that uh, later on in the what have we been doing section. But how how was the experience for that for you? And has it has it really helped good before? Yeah, it def- definitely helped. Uh, big thanks to Thaxi there, who was uh, he was the the teacher and I was the uh, the student. I was the grasshopper. Um, yeah, no, really helped. So anyone who does struggle a bit, uh, definitely have a listen to that one. It actually goes through it well, explains it well. And explain, I mean, because there are a lot of things I just didn't use and just said, oh, you know, it's it, it's not worthwhile. It's only a couple of percent or something. But when you sort of hear Thaxi explain it and then using those things, you thought, wow, it, it actually does make a difference. Yeah, and the thing we wanted to do with this one is to take it from first principles, from the ground up. Somebody who had just been doing Slayer, for example, or somebody who is comfortable in God Wars Dungeon 1, maybe even God Wars Dungeon 2, and then ask the question, okay, well, how do you go from here? What if you want to kill Telos? What if you want to kill Araxor? What if you want to move on to the Elder God Wars bosses, like Karapak, the Arch Glacier, and get your Zuck Cape? How do you go about getting ready for that? That's what this monthly bit talks about so if you're if you're interested in hearing about that or you just want to hear the perspective on that if you've already gone through that you can sign up at patreon.com slash rsbnb for a dollar a month and you get access to 60 odd other monthly bits too on top of that all for that one price and we also do have two other tiers as well presently open 
We have the VIP tier for three dollars a month, where you get a Discord chat channel, you get a Discord rank, and you get a mention on the podcast at the start of the month, plus high quality stereo versions of the show. For five dollars a month, you'll receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week, and gain access to the clips that we use to make the clip show at the end of the year. And this also grants you the RSBNB update Christmas card, and of course, we have the experience tier, which is currently full. Um, but those are the fine people we thanked at the top of the show, but a big, huge thank you goes out to all of our Patreon supporters for allowing us to do what we do here. It means a lot to us. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Borough activities. We have chocolate mining. We have, uh, Cocomancy Hunter. We have making foil, which is smithing. And we have the uh, eggplant con- conveyor. And, you know, I, 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 I did these notes earlier today after lunch. And I was like, I, I wrote eggplant conveyor. And I, you know, opened the show notes before. And I'm like, what am I talking about eggplant for? <laughs> like, where was there a conveyor belt with eggplant on it? <laughs> but, it's a, but it's a plant that makes eggs. So just, you know, that, you know, out, outside of it all. Um Looking at the various skill methods out there, um, what what are your guys' favorites? Hunter, okay, yeah. Coco, Coco Mancy, yeah, yeah. You, you two tennis Hunter, Hunter, yeah. Okay, I can't I can't figure out the other one. It's it's complicated. Okay, I have to say I like the chocolate mining. I feel like the chocolate mining is the simplest one because it doesn't necessitate movement. Hmm. I think there's more tokens out of the the hunter one. Okay. Chocolate mining and cocomancy seem to be the two easiest ones. Uh, but I'm at 197 mil hunter. Uh, sorry, mining, and I'm trying to sort of save that. So hunter was the way I went there. I did have a go at the um, eggplant chocolate factory for sort of cooking and crafting, but yeah, it just you've got to move from one to the other to 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 make it uh optimal or um, or rely on having people in there yes, as well who are going to doing be, the other ones going to be doing that and exactly. you, know, you know there's also the the thing where if you do, if if you do the eggplant one you are relegated to inside and you don't get to you know be part of the environment so there's that too mm. um and the the smithing one is really simple. You you take a piece of metal and you in effect compound it and compact it down to a piece of foil. I don't think there's much to write home about that one, but that one's also inside. So uh, my vote on this one was for was for the uh, uh, chocolate mining. And yes, 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 we know everybody everybody yearns for the mines. Of course, the meme on that being uh, the children yearn for the mines with Minecraft. I don't know if either of you guys were aware of that. <laughs> You guys, no, no you guys hadn't heard you hadn't heard the yearns for the mines meme no no you guys don't play minecraft nope no okay wow okay i'm the one dating myself here then because i'm, I'm 53 <laughs> mate when when minecraft come out it was like it was just a kid's game and i was like you know in my 40s it's, it's nothing <laughs> it's nothing but a kid's game at this point like there's all sorts yeah, of weird I believe so, stuff because... you can do with that yeah. you know like i've gone to space I've made, <laughs> I've made nuclear reactors in it yeah but uh minecraft aside let's talk about why the why the eggplant is so uh, complicated it comes yeah, down just... to like it 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 comes down to following instructions from the text i have to say but it's also yep. like a question of if I have two other people next to me do i you know need to be on one of the stations they're on or what exactly with this? Like, that's the question yeah, that... that comes up. Because, like, the description given right now is that, you know, mix Rocky Road chocolate into bunnies and then have it wrapped, be wrapped in blue foil. Which, nobody was on the foil station, so I went to the foil station and chose foil blue. But at the same time, my foil station is sparkling. So does that mean that everybody who is over there should move over and make blue foil? Or what exactly, you know, does that mean is is the confusing bit, I think. Yeah, I just, I just 
it, it was sort of similar to the Halloween event where you were running from, uh, you know, the the potatoes to the yeah, you know, you're sort of running around those three different cauldron type things. It seems similar to that, uh, but it, it, if if everyone's on one station it slows down your production rate. You, yeah. you need to have sort of an even number across all three. So it's sort of, I, I found that just a little, yeah, a little too much reliant on other people. Right. And, and the question is, you know, what does the sparkling mean? Like, I don't think that was yeah. explained anywhere, was it? I don't think I saw because, anything about the sparkling. Because that so, tells yeah. me that, you know, you should just go to those other machines then, right? Hmm. Maybe it was sparkling because no one was on it and was saying, hey, this is the optimum. We need people over here to do that. Well, there's one that's sparkling right now and I'm on it. So my sense is, is that you can, when the bunny says, you know, make a certain kind of chocolate, you set all the machines to do that. Then I guess if everybody then congregated over to the sparkling machine is where you'd get your extra tokens. If I'm, mm. if I'm, if I'm reading this right now, but it's not, you know, immediately intuitive with that. Yeah. So, and, you know, I think what the unfortunate thing is, I know Zerdones had done some testing on this, is that the most effective, um, the most effective point earner is this eggplant conveyor belt thing. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the sort of the more lean forward where you have to watch more, should earn more. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the, the Hunter one, I mean, once once you click on it, you can sort of, I can walk away for, for three or four minutes because I know it's just going to fill up my inventory. Uh, then I can come back and, and move on to the next one. Whereas that one, you have to sort of move, so you're moving sort of probably every 15 or 30 seconds or whatever it is when it changes. So what you're saying you know, then those ones. is that the activities outside, mining, Hunter, and I guess, you know, smithing inside are kind of like the lean lean back lean ones back. yep and then the eggplant conveyors the more lean forward one where you can also you know hyper optimize it and say you know once you set the machine to blue to make chocolate eggs with rocky road chocolate you can then go to whichever machine is sparkling you can then get even more points on top of that would yep. be my way of that's what it sounds this, like yes yeah. right and and see that's that's the issue with this is that it's not immediately uh not immediately clear what's going on with that. So oh, and your reliance on others. Hmm. Well, I mean it's two. So I mean you're you're gonna kinda you can just kind of bounce back and forth between them. You know, they're all within range of each other and you can just right click them and it's not you know, it's not too bad on that. So but you guys gonna be spending much time here then gathering uh spring tokens egg points yeah. and the like yeah and even after i've unlocked everything i'll probably still hang around because i do like the area it's a fun little area and it's sort of only for a couple of weeks and get some of those uh that that extra egg that that can gives the chance of uh, the, the rare prize i mean i won't hit the rare prize i'm, I'm not shane but you know it'll uh <laughs> let's not talk about that <laughs> yeah no shane's lost his horseshoe um <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's just a fun environment. I just, I just like looking at it. And now up on the forty-seven inch screen, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, and to be fair, you mentioned, you know, the ultra rare prize. And the interesting uh, thing about this is that they're not mentioning, you know, if there's going to be a specific, you know, Easter rare. Like we had, of course, the orange Halloween mask and the purple Santa hat this year. But given the trend, I think it would be safe to assume that in the next week and a bit, we're going to get something like that in game then. I would assume. But even if there's not, it's not a big deal to me. It's just fun. Yeah. yeah. If the content's fun, I'll play it. I don't care if it's I'm not getting optimal XP or anything like that. Yeah, as long because as I'm there's enjoying nothing, myself. Like, there's you know? nothing new from the gummy surprise egg. Hmm. Like, like, there's nothing new in there this year. That's 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 that like, we know of. That's exceedingly <laughs> rare. Like there was the purple uh, Santa yeah. hat at Christmas. So, but overall, I think we can call it a happy Easter event. And you know, they seem to have learned 
what the community wants for holiday events, I'll say. I think that's the best way of putting yeah. it, is that now that yeah, we've seen these line. two in a row, there's a sense that, you know, they know which way the community wants to go. And the question then is, yeah, well, okay, do we, you know, replace what was there for Halloween last year with something like this? And then I think that's going to, uh, you know, next yeah. October, <laughs> <Yeah>. next October, <laughs> when we truly yeah. look at this and see, oh, okay, that's where we, that's where mm. we were. And this is uh, where we went. Then we can, you know, re- kind of take stock of Jagex's holiday event strategy over the last year and, and see, uh, where things go from there but i mean take this idea and the way this environment is and let's go ghostbusters 2 right like remember or, that death house one where we were that's, yeah, 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 that's, that's it that's exactly that it fun. that's exactly yeah. the one i have in mind with that yeah, yeah. Well, i enjoy i really enjoyed that one and if you could expand on that and make it sort of into this type of thing and you know it's enjoyable i mean i, I would call this a, a, a good success yeah, and, and you know, like it's something I want to play to the point where I would happily, you know, do this, take a take an hour and a half or so out of the day and, and actually, you know, work on this rather than, you know, pushing a skill to one twenty or, you know, beyond that mm. or or even sometimes, you know, doing doing PVM with that. So um, yep. I think that's what we call a success on that. Well done overall. Yep. All right. I do want to bring bring, bring note and um, just draw everybody's attention to the Treasure Hunter calendar uh, for this. I know, I know, we did this two weeks in a row with the with the overrides um, that are out there. But starting on the twenty first and ending on the twenty fifth of March, the Rainbow Trail event is back, and with this, there is a new Rainbow Dragon Breath override. Which I mean, I mean, we're all eyeing these these cosmetic overrides, right? Like I, I, I will say oh, right I... now, after the show last week or whenever that was, I went out and I spent seven hundred mil on fungal death swiftness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm they're in. They found the lane. And I'll just stay in the lane. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> you say that. Say that. <laughs> I'll knock down the barriers and cross, uh, cross, uh, go across the embankment and go head on again. Yeah. I mean, you know how every how... every every nine or twelve months they do that. <laughs> they motivated Shane to spend seven hundred mil. Hmm. This, this this guy this 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 guy let's just call him frugal. At, yeah. At best, and they got him to spend seven hundred mil. Last but week, that, yeah. This this but, is the right area. <laughs> yeah, and they also updated Azure Dragon say, Breath with this one as well. Yeah, they, they I just right. want to say though that the uh, Rainbow Dragon Breath it just it looks like the super hot breath from the Queen Black Dragon. So I I really like that one. Yeah. Oh, that's. Um, and that's reg, cool. regular Dragon Breath also got an update with this too. So it's not just you know. Treasure Hunter stuff. It's the actual override. Yep. And this, you know, brings up a question in my mind, given where we were at with, you know, Fungal Death Swiftness and, you know, the Azure and the orange one that I'm forgetting the name of and the Fungal Overrides. Um, And I know it would be a lot. My question is, how much would it cost them? Or rather, what kind of cost would we be looking at, I wonder? If they were to put these in somewhere like Solomon store where you could just buy them outright, like how much would we, you know, in effect be dealing with given the fact that these are like a 0.05% drop chance on treasure hunter and, you know, they're going for huge, huge amounts of money already with this is my question. I wouldn't mind if they, as long as they let people know that these things, you know, we're giving you this, and in two years' time, we're going to chuck it on on th- the store. As long as they let people know about it, uh, I have no issue with them throwing it on onto the store and you know buying spending a couple of bonds on it for that. It would be more than a couple of bonds if you like well, if you yeah, like you know if you I mean, protract yeah. out the fact that it's seven hundred yeah. mil, and then there was you know a certain amount of keys that went into that, like. 
like for example, let's just say for the sake of argument that it was a one percent drop, which is probably you know get based on where we're at with this probably about um three to four times more common than it actually is, so let's just assume a one percent drop and what you would be in effect looking at that then is that at around 350 treasure hunter keys, there'd be about an 80 odd percent chance that you would have already received that item. So you factor that in how much does, you know, 300 odd treasure hunter keys cost for that. And I, I don't know what the key packages are, are worth at, at this point in time. It's been a long time. Since but I'm also at looking at, the people who have who've done those with the keys have had two years of exclusivity with it, True. and then going on. True. So you you won't you shouldn't be paying the same sort of price. No, or no. it's something that comes out. Okay, this is going to be uh, you know, a, a seasonal thing. We're going to do it for a week each season, or you know, every six months. We'll we will we, we will put these things back onto Treasure Hunter. So. It gives that opportunity for more to come in, uh, you know, and get people who want to have these things and not just hoard the tokens, you know, to uh, to sell at exorbitant prices down the track. Uh, you know, I, I think they need to sort of find find the balance between that, letting the people for that exclusivity for the first, you know, uh, two or three years, and then opening it up to everyone else. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um... I'm just looking up right now for the sake of argument how much uh, a package of treasure hunter keys costs because, you know, I don't do this um, that often here. So let me just... I think one just... bond gives you 15 keys, so... Okay, one bond gives you 15. I was talking about, you know, buying in bulk, like buying like 400. Oh, or... yeah, I think the, the... I think it's the the 200 key pack goes for about 50 or 60 bucks, I think. Oh really? I something. I, I mean, don't don't quote me on that. I'm not. Um... Uh, f the 200 key pack is seventy dollars Canadian, mm. and the 450 yeah, key US, pack yeah. is 140 dollars Canadian. Mm. So you factor that in, and you know, realize that you would probably have the chance of getting one of these if they were at a one percent drop after you know 400 odd keys or so. That's a hundred. We'll just say a hundred. U hundred US dollars for the sake of argument here, and then you know realize that what we're dealing with right now on Treasure Hunter is probably you know about three to four times as rare as that. You're potentially looking at cases where if you wanted to gamble for this, you would need to spend upwards of three hundred to four hundred dollars on Treasure Hunter keys. Easily, yeah. And I mean, hey, if there's if there's whales out there that want to do that, all the power to them. And I think that opens up the really interesting discussion here well what if you you know made treasure hunter all these sorts of cosmetics out there made them some things that people you know really wanted to look at in terms of ability overrides weapon overrides outfits and whatnot and you made them you know rare as heck on there and you know you didn't capitalize on things like smoldering and whatnot i wonder if that would be a way to earn Goodwill with Treasure Hunter. Would it earn goodwill though if they're, yeah, no, they're saying, expensive. "Yeah, I want this, but I'm going to have to spend four or five hundred dollars"? Yeah, no, that's you know, I expensive. don't think that's getting goodwill, and right. that's why I said I'd like to see it done that way at the start. Give them like you know that that two year grace period where they've got it exclusive, then it can go on a Salomon store and for. 70, 80, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars. Right, right and that's why I highlight the rarity of this to show that, you know, you would need to spend that much in keys to have a chance, reasonable chance of getting these. Wait. And because of that, because of that huge amount, you know, people will say, you know, just sell it outright. You know, I think the expected value for an ability override like this would be uh, at the low end five and maybe at the high end 15, 20 dollars. And that's what people would expect for that. But I think it, you know, have to be an order of magnitude higher for it to make, yeah. you know, business sense. And that's yeah. why they don't do it. And they do it this way instead. Oh, of course. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't spend 50 bucks on it, but I'd, exactly. you know, I'd probably spend 15 or 20 bucks. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I got a little bit of spare cash. I'll throw 20 bucks down for that. But yeah. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be spending fifty or sixty dollars on it. Well, if if instead of co cosmetic overrides, we called them or thought of them as like, oh, I don't know, a ship. I wonder, Shane. You th you know where I'm? What I'm thinking? What but a ship thinking? on your Star Trek game is yeah. is is giving you something other than just a look, isn't it? You, you're yeah. getting sort of you're getting, uh, you're getting the powers, more powerful the ship powers or whatever. that are associated with. But it. I'm exactly. talking about how. But I'm talking about how the monetization works. How you can hmm. buy a a ship for fifty bucks, but there are these packs these rare things you know like once a year they're two or three hundred dollars like yeah and and there's a way you can do it with currency too right shane yeah. like there so that's what i'm talking about because if if you were to just look at each item at and, three, $400, and, and and see that's what shit. i said is that when you look at it from that perspective too i don't know how much um Rainbow Dragon Breath is going for, but if we take the fact that I spent you know seven hundred mil on Fungal Death Swiftness, right, and we look at the price of a bond and protract it out that way, bonds are going for about a hundred mil. Let's just say that's Probably seven bonds, bonds yeah. and at you know seven odd dollars each. You know, there you go, mm. right? Forty forty nine fifty dollars. Yeah. It was for right fungal. It's <laughs> right on. Just looking, <laughs> looking at Tannis' thing, just imagine if they did. Okay, you've got your regular Dragon Breath, but if you bought the Azure or the uh, the Rainbow one and it gives you, you know, it it, it cuts the cooldown by 10% no. or gives you a 1% no. extra hit, that, no. yeah, that's exactly right. That would, people would scream no. about things like that. And, and I feel like if you do that, you would kill mm. the game. Exactly. <laughs> because I feel like if... Jagex monetization was to become even more predatory and even more overpowered than it is right now. No question that would be the next step. You know, a, a special version of Dragon Breath that you unlock from the store that looks differently, hits a little bit harder, has a little bit of a lower cooldown, and then, boy, we've been entirely... We would be having yep. Hero Pass discussions right. to exactly. the next magnitude yep. after that if they did something like that. And that's why you've like got that. to keep them just as cosmetic... Uh, you know, I I would make them a little less rare, so that more people. If if they say okay, it's what is it? It's it's point five percent chance. But if we give you a one point five percent chance, I think more people would spend. You know, I would if if I could guarantee I would have it. You know, in in two hundred keys, I might buy a two hundred key pack to get right. it. Right, and and but see, when that's I'm not exactly. I'm never going to do that. Right, and that's exactly how the the lockbox system works on stows. That um, it's not it's not advertised as this way, but there's a pity point where after you open a certain amount of boxes, you are more likely to get that you know grand prize with that, and then once you get that grand prize, you either use it yourself or you can sell it on the exchange. And that's mm. what Tannis was going for here is that, well, this is kind of the same thing. If we, you know, start floating these cosmetic overrides once a month, it's a much higher cadence than that. And the people who want to, you know, shell out the money and get the XP along the way and do it uh, by way of gambling can do that. And then they keep it or they sell it on the exchange and then somebody else buys it, you know like I did with my fungal swiftness. And to be clear, and, and just to you know say how this happened, I spent money that I earned entirely in game on this, but I could totally see somebody if you know this rainbow dragon breath came up and they really wanted it, but they didn't have the money uh, in game to do it. I would say, well, you know, if you really want rainbow dragon breath, your best bet is to probably just, you know, go buy a few bonds, chuck those on the exchange, and then use that money to do to to pick this Definitely. up. Definitely. I mean, think I mean, about if for... I were to get this, I, I I wouldn't be gambling for it. I would just be buying it. Uh, as you said, buy a few bonds and sell those and get it in game that way. And for people that and you're guaranteed you to know... get it that way. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, for people that's don't mind or you know to spend a little bit of money on games in general or if runescape is your primary or only game i i mean you're not 
you know, premiere isn't that much if you think about it over, you know, over a year. So why not give yourself a treat once in a while? Mm, a of course. Cosmetic, you know, here and there. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and, and for me, like, it's a lot harder to make money in game. Like me, I can, it, Seven, I, I can make seven dollars way quicker, way easier than I can make a hundred million games. And that's exactly the argument that pretty much everybody who plays RS is talking about these days, given yeah, you know, it's just... <laughs> um, the player base. Yeah. Unless, of course, you know you're you're good at PVM. In that case, you know money's not a problem for you. Right. So, but I'm not. So that's <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> And and see, that's the thing. And I think it's an interesting reframe when you look at it on that because everybody sees Treasure Hunter as a gambling thing, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you don't necessarily need to see it as such in that you could say, you know, well, I have the GP already in game. I can just go buy the scroll. Or... Yeah. I can, you know, spend $35 on this and buy bonds, and then that'll get me the money I need to buy it on the exchange. And then I think where you run into problems with that is when you have cases where that can't happen, like we had with the Halloween event, like we yes. had with Hero Pass. And I think that's uh, probably the red line for a lot of people when it comes to RS3 monetization. Hmm. So... It's one of the red lines. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know... It, it actually looks like the old movie, like, Entrapment with the lasers and shit. I oh, mean, God. The, the, the RuneScape community's red lines are pretty... <laughs> pretty <laughs> numerous. <laughs> <gasps> oh, I don't know if I want to diffuse that one right now, but... Um... <laughs> Okay, let's uh let's let's move on then and uh talk about what we've been doing and in particular uh you Parnassius with your PVM update because we we mentioned to the listeners that that we would have that uh for them. So, you know, post monthly bit, where are you at? How are yep. you feeling with PVM? Yeah, uh, a lot more comfortable just uh using those relics and uh I I got the the berserker ring uh all those things that uh that taxi told me to are uh, really good i uh, i went and got my kiln cape uh that was very simple to get not obviously. too difficult right no they're very simple to get uh once i took the spear to, to take care of the dills <laughs> uh i mean that that was that was just because I did a stupid thing the first time and never went back. But uh, I have been doing... I went and did uh, Araxi. I did Talos. Got my pieces from that. And a big thank you to our, one of our listeners, Thieves, who took me to uh, Ambassador and uh, darted that for me so I could get the final piece. So I've actually Oh, so that gives you T90 now. now. Yeah, I've got the T90 Power Armor. So I went to, uh, I decided to start doing a bit of Zuck to try and get that done. And I was always dying to the double jads uh, or the triple jads. Yeah, you know. and that's going to come down to safe spotting. Yeah, that's right. And and also using, because I am normally just a mouse player, I don't really use keybinds. And, you know, Thaxi's convinced me, no, use your keybind. So I've put food on there. Uh, and the prayer switching on that, uh, and have managed to get up to Jad. So I faced Jad twice. You mean uh, Zuck, right? Zuck, sorry, Zuck. <laughs> uh, faced the Zuck twice. Uh, second time got him down to just under a hundred k, and he just king hit me and took like about four thousand life points straight off. Uh, From but... the sounds of it, you probably forgot to. Resonate or reflect one of the uh, meteors. On one of the, yeah, yeah, one of the. I, I, I did, just didn't see it come up or whatever. But yeah, it's it's going well, and uh, I'm actually instead of being frustrated, I'm actually enjoying it because it's yeah, okay, it's a little bit more involved. So uh, you know, playing with keybinds and doing sort of uh, semi-revo rather than full revolution. Uh, 
but but very enjoyable. As I said, I mean, took took down a Raxi, the easiest I've ever taken her down. I have fought her before, but that was all pre-COVID. Yeah. So going back there and learning that again, and it's just so easy. And and taking Talos all the way to phase four, I've only had uh, one or two kills there before just to get the... Um, the title and yeah again using the keybinds using the relic having all the right gear and using power armor over over tank uh yeah i have to eat a little bit more but you can really tell in the way uh you know sort of the hits come down uh how much better it is and even with zuck uh, i do still use the tank armor there i just find that I, I tried with yeah, the power fair, armor, I but I was just dying. Um, so I went back to tank. Yeah, but I can, you know, the I can take him down first go, get get him down to that, you know, five fifty and the four fifty, getting him down to those life points, no worries. So I don't have to repeat the uh, re- repeat the igneous waves, and even doing the um, lawless run, the second two I can kill uh, in time. The first one. Uh, where I was always leaving, you know, two, sometimes three of them alive, I get the last one down to, you know, quarter health. So I think that's just going to be a little bit of timing on my behalf, and I might even get a flawless run done in there. Yeah, and, and see, so, that's that's yeah. such a such an interesting way of looking at it because we didn't make many changes. And, no, just a few little things. Right. And, it's just like, and, yeah. and that's one thing I want to uh, stress that's not coming through here right now is that we were very clear on the monthly bit that it wasn't going to be, you know, a ton of changes and it wasn't going to be a complete upending in the way that you were playing the game. It was, you know, a quick one, two things hmm. here or there that would be changed. And yeah, basically based it was off the of relics. That, it was, Getting... you know, make small incremental changes, get comfortable, hmm. push yourself a little bit, some more small incremental changes and repeat. Yep. As I said, like things like the relics, I never really worried about that because I thought, you know, that that couple of percent's not going to make a difference, but it does. So using the relics, getting the Reaver's ring over the uh, other ring I was using... You know, uh, and and even the auras, uh, you know, because I've always just been a penance or a, a um, vampirism aura, but using, you know, learning to use, okay, use the Aegis or use the Invigorate, uh, those type of things that sort of give you that extra hit or the martial art aura, those things have really helped. Uh, so I, I I would advise anyone who struggles a little bit with PVM and want to get into those sort of higher end bosses, definitely have a listen to that. Uh, to that podcast because you know Thaxi explains it really easily very simply and you know tells you the reasons why you're doing this and those keybinds i mean keybinds i didn't realize just how much easier it is using keybinds than just trying to click on them as i've always done before yeah and and see the thing that i'll also make very clear about this is that when we were doing that monthly bit we in effect designed it in such a way that there would be natural breakpoints through it where you could pause and you know rewind back and you know think about that maybe you know do that section and come back to it because we're we're very aware that it's difficult to follow a video tutorial in the best of times oh yeah <laughs> and you know we're working with audio only so that was new for us and you know we heard back from some people who had listened to it and it turned out to you know, work well for them. So, you know, if you have listened to that and you are a Patreon member, if you have more feedback on that, please do let us know. We do want to hear about that. We want to hear about how you applied these sorts of things. So do, don't hesitate to, you know, post in the comments, post in the discord to reach out uh, to any of us about that, but I'm glad it's working out. Glad it's working Mm. out for you. And if anyone has questions, I mean, they can, you know, contact me in game or contact me on uh, on Discord. You know, leave a message. I will eventually get to it when I when I sign in. Um, or even, you know, as Shane said, send a question to him, and he can ask me and 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 report it back to you as well, if if need be. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah it's it's amazing how much more fun PVM has become for to me, uh, just in that week with it, since we've done that. And that's what we wanted, and you know that's 
that's good because it it's a it's a black box and it's you know kind of hard to uh get into from all that but um mm. Tannis, uh what have you been up to this week you, you know just much. a little bit of the easter um event uh you know mostly hunter uh with that but um yeah that it's it's been a pretty chaotic week for me so um, right yeah that's what i've been doing okay fair enough fair enough um as for me obviously uh the easter event and the easter skilling activities associated with that but i did break the dry streak on friday night 987 oh. kills i got the uh, Robo the uh, first necromancer top piece, which was a new item in the collection log. So I am so one item Jewish away. Nail? No, I'm oh. one item away from completing the log. I need the lantern. Oh, okay. So uh, I've been. Oh, I've, very good. I've been chipping away on that, but that was just such a big relief to know. Nice. You know, know that it's not broken and that you're actually <laughs> you're actually going to be getting something eventually. No, it's not broken. You are broken. <laughs> Yeah, between 700 and 950 kills, uh, for some reason, it just doesn't work. There's no drops. So once you get through that barrier, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, with that, you know, moved on past 1,000 and, and whatnot. And, you know, when time allows in the evening, I'll do, you know, a Raziel hour or thereabouts and uh, crank out a couple kills because I'm one item away. So why not complete the log, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, and if I, and if I do manage to complete that, that will be my first boss log that I have completed. Very nice. Which, you know, e even more than some of the other, you know, simpler ones out there. So. Next um, up, care pack. Yes. Yes. Which, which I have talked about before and that, you know, I, I, that was, that was the, that was the thing from last week was able to skip lightning, um, off that. So, uh, Really enjoyed enjoyed doing that, but uh, I just need to figure out where I'm going to use ranged, and you know that's that's part of the reason why I bought that uh, fungal death swiftness. Is ranged was my first combat style, and it just feels so good having ranged uh, be back uh, where it is on that. So, uh, but necromancy aside, and uh, content. Over here aside, we got this uh, little thing called Varlamore on Old School RuneScape this week. What would you guys call an update that adds a new area, adds four quests, adds a hunter guild, adds new methods for thieving, mining, and prayer, and adds new P two new PVM activities? What would you guys call that? That's an expansion pack. Yeah. Or... It a year's worth of content in RS3. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and see that's the that's the thing that I've been trying to think of. You know, do I call it an expansion or do I not call it an expansion? Because, you know, there has been updates leading up to it and there will be updates after it. So I don't necessarily know it's the expansion in, you know, a typical World of Warcraft or a typical Elder Scrolls online context. But it's, for a, that? it's it's a it's a RuneScape expansion where they do the big thing. Yeah, and then it's, they it's can like it's a big, huge temple content drop, yeah. and you know I'm not the biggest fan of the old school combat system out there. But I went out and I trained yesterday, and you know this is the third time in RuneScape history this has happened. I got the notification that I'd been not been online too long, and I should take a break uh -huh. from my screen. <laughs> Damn. I get that all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really happen, happen that much for me. <laughs> but the reason I needed that is that one of the quests actually required 48 Slayer, and um, the quests there are, are shaping up to be rather interesting, too. With that, um, imagine, and I'm just going to pivot to the Hunter Guild right now. Imagine for a Hunter you had Slayer tasks, where you get that assigned a specific cool. creature, and then you have to go out and you have to go hunt that creature until you get a rare part from it, then bring it back to the guild for a bit of XP and some um, rare furs and meats. That's the that Hunter Rumor be... system that was added with this update. Well, I mean, that would be one solution to uh, just doing the highest level thing that you can do. Yeah, and, and see, I'm not sure that it goes far enough to fix the issues with Hunter, and I think we're going to talk about that on this week's show. Uh, this week's old school show. We're going to do lots of the PVM stuff this week, though we're not certain if we're going to do Hunter Guild with that or the thieving stuff uh, this week 
and punt the other stuff to next week on that. Um, but there, there's lots of interesting thinking about that in terms of, you know, is it enough for Hunter and whatnot? But uh, the thieving stuff there, they add a new piece of uh, thieving content. In, in, in effect, burglary. You're breaking into people's houses in Varlamore. Um and it's a lean back uh, I'm thieving to training method, kind <laughs> of like the Prith Elf thieving, but much more time limited and certainly uh, not as lucrative. So it's the thieving training method for people who um, don't like blackjacking, just don't like repeatedly clicking things, which I am definitely. So did you get with. safe cracking and OS? You know, if there was going to be one thing that's kind of like safe cracking, it kind of uses a similar mechanic to that when you're in the house because you go into the house and you, in effect, just AFK at one spot. But then another certain spot inside that house will start blinking with an arrow above it. Then when you mm -hmm. click that thing with the arrow, you'll get a, you know, get a huge drop of XP. Uh, so um it, it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. And, you know, I'll encourage anybody who wants the full... Uh, discussion on that to uh, join us on the old school show this weekend that uh, goes out on Sundays because we will definitely be talking about that in terms in terms of everything that it brought. Legalizing to... burglary, very good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly uh, what what part of it comes down to. But it's just such a unique culture and a unique area expansion on that, and I just kind of wanted to uh, bring that forward because it's. Um, spurred me to do a lot of thinking and I'm not, you know, necessarily ready to make a um like a, a formal uh declaration on this, but it's got me thinking a lot about the kind of content that we need in RuneScape three and makes me wonder, you know, why we're not seeing that and what the game would be like if we did receive that sort of content in one way or another. But uh, I've just been thinking about that, and I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested to know what everybody else uh, thinks who who has been on that. But I'd love to see something expansive like that. But I mean, the difference is obviously the it, it's you know, a different it, budget it and a, much a different scope. type of game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, but um, oh, hey, I just found an egg. Um, it's in a chest uh, just uh, south of the south of the big tree where you where you spawn in, and, and, and like that's the kind of thing you're looking for. The egg is in a chest, and you can actually you know mouse over it and see <laughs> take golden egg. So there it is. But that's what I've been up to. Uh, let's go through some achievements right now before we uh, before we wrap the show up. So um, starting off, we have Jam Andy fifty two with two hundred mil constitution on March eighteenth. Balbazard with 99 Necromancy on the 16th. Mesh Quest with 99 Invention on the 16th. Terry Dax with 120 Slayer, Necromancy, and Dungeoneering on the 16th. Jam Andy 52 with 200 mil Divination on the 15th. And Robbie with 200 mil Woodcutting on the 15th. Wasn't, wasn't very many there, so I was actually able to uh, take all those. <laughs> but congratulations, everyone. Well done. All right, moving on to pick of the week. And normally pick of the week is, is interesting because we discuss, you know, who's going to do pick of the week and whether or not something's there. But, you know, I, as a courtesy, asked you guys if you guys had one. And um, you guys said no, but I wanted to do this one here. And the pick of the week this week is a new uh, iPhone case or a company that does uh, iPhone and iPad uh, cases, and they're called Bullstrap. And the reason for that is because... I used to use the Apple uh, MagSafe uh, leather case. And this past year, they discontinued the leather versions of it and moved to their fine woven materials for their environmental push, which is which is fine. Apple can do that if they want to. But when it comes down to it at the end of the day, fine woven uh, turned out uh, to be horrid in terms of uh, durability and just, you know, even getting scratches on it which is weird when you think about fabric. So I was in the market for a new uh, leather iPhone case with this. And, you know, I, I ran into this company um, called Bullstrap. And the the case that arrived with this actually turned out to be really nice, really nice, so much so that it was nicer than the Apple case with that. And, and you know, that's just the general thing is that everybody always – you know, looks to Apple first for the sil for their silicone and you know previously leather cases and now fine woven. 
But there's better stuff out there, especially, you know, if you want to lean into something that's actual leather on it that works with MagSafe. And, you know, there's really not too much to say about it. It's really nice construction, really smooth leather on that. And when you sum it all up at the end of the day, it's probably even a better offering than Apple even had on that. So for anybody who liked uh, the old iPhone leather cases and, you know, realizes you can't get those anymore, um, Bullstrap at Bullstrap.co, C-O, co, I guess C-O, um, makes a really nice case that I'm going to have in the show notes for pick of the week here. And they sell them for all the iPhone models going back to the 12. So no matter which version you have, you can, you know, pick one up and you'll know that it'll work with your phone and, and work with MagSafe. So you guys have any questions about it? Any questions about the company? No, I was having a quick oh, look yeah, at it here. I like the cool. one with the card holder. Yeah, yeah. And and see, that's the thing is that I will at, at times use the MagSafe wallet with, with it, which is what I used to use on the Apple one. And because it's MagSafe, that same sort of thing just works with this one too, which is really nice. Mm. So um, there's there's multiple options. You could, I guess they even sell watch bands and whatnot too, if you really wanted to uh, lean into this. But they're an American company. They make their stuff in China. Um, so, you know, just just keep that in mind if you're conscious of where you're buying from or where things are manufactured, but it's a nice replacement for what Apple used to have. So that's nice. the pick of the week. Very good. All righty. Anybody have anything else before we go? Because I feel like we covered the PVM update, which was very important, and we covered, of course, the uh, Easter update. But anything else before we go? Uh, no. no, I think nope. it's... Yep. No. We've yeah. tried that in. Pretty quiet week. <laughs> Fried the egg. I get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, in any case, uh, you can find the podcast on all the podcast listeners out there. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Pocket Cast, and more. Just visit update.show slash subscribe. And I did do some checking into it, and Spotify does have the transcripts as well, as does Apple, and both of them seem to be, seem to be pretty accurate, so... Uh, it's it's nice uh, seeing the way they do this and that somebody out there is finally making podcasts searchable, which has been a problem ever since the beginning on this. So it's just nice to see that things have evolved like that. But if uh, you do consume stuff on YouTube and, you know, you might be interested in doing that for this, youtube.com slash RSBNB, like and subscribe greatly helps the show out. But uh, beyond that, I don't think there's much else left to say for this one, except uh, we'll we'll be back next week. You guys good? All good. Oh, good. All righty, escaping all. Yep. Thanks for being here, both of you, and of course to the listeners. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. See you then, everyone. Take care. See you. Bye bye.